I'm very impressed with the performance this thing's putting out. I mean, coming in at 4.1 liters and able to run Forza Horizon 5 at 1440p like this is absolutely amazing. Hey, what's going on everybody? It's ETA Prime back here again. Today we're going to be putting together a super small form factor mini PC using the most powerful low profile GPU on the market right now. Recently on the channel, we actually did some testing with it, but that was in a much larger case paired up with the more powerful CPU it was a 13th gen i5. And my main objective when picking this card up was to build a small form factor gaming machine with it, because when it comes down to it, yes, this is the most powerful low profile card you can get right now. And it's known as the NVIDIA RTX A2000. And I'm going to tell you right now, it's on par with the RTX 3050 and a super small form factor, doesn't require any extra power, and it'll only pull up to 70 watts from the PCIe slot. So this is perfect for a really powerful mini PC build. Now, when it comes to the case, uh, there's several on the market. You can actually pick up some really nice cases from AliExpress, but I didn't want to wait a month and I didn't want to pay $150 for a small form factor mini ITX case. So I actually decided to pick up a smaller case I've had my eye on for a little while, and this is not meant to use a GPU of any sort, be it low profile or full size, but we're going to modify it and make this RTX A2000 work in this case. This is known as the K29. I got this on Amazon for $54. There are a couple sellers with this same exact listing. Some are going for around 80, some are going for 54. I chose the least expensive option and it's coming in at 4.1 liters. Now, like I mentioned, it's not meant to use a GPU. This is more of an APU or integrated graphics case. And real quick, I wanted to give you a kind of an idea of how this should go together if you're using it for integrated graphics. It uses a 1U PSU right there at the bottom. So really, when it's set up like this, there's no room for a GPU, but we're going to kind of disregard this and we're going to make it work. So obviously, the bread and butter of this build is the RTX A2000. You can pick these up used on Amazon for around $250, and I'm going to tell you right now, it's well worth it if you are already thinking about picking up something like a GTX 1650 low profile. This blows it out of the water, and with it overclocked, it does outperform the RTX 3050. When it comes to the other components, for the motherboard, we've got an ASRock B550 Mini ITX. The CPU is going to be the Ryzen 5 5600X. Now, originally I was under the impression that I already had the 3600 installed in this board, but after I put it all together, turned out I had the 3600X in here. But I would definitely go with the 3600 given our power constraints because uh, we're only going to be working with 200 watts of on tap power for this whole build here. So uh, overclocking is kind of out of the question with the 3600X. RAM is going to be handled by 16 gigabytes of Team Force running at 3200 megahertz, but we can do some overclocking. And since we're going to be working in such a confined space, I did need a riser cable for this GPU. This is actually a PCIe 4.0 riser cable. All the parts will be listed in the description in case you want to build something similar to this. And of course, we're going to need a power supply for this build, and the smart thing to do would be just go with the Pico power supply, and that would use an external power brick, but recently I was on eBay and I saw somebody selling a couple of these Nwin Chopin 200 watt PSUs. As you can see, it's a very funky form factor. I mean, it's kind of a half height 1U power supply, um, but it should fit in this case pretty nicely. I'll tell you, if I had to do this over again, I would have just went with a Pico power supply. Around 230 watts would be more than enough for a build like this. Okay, so uh, I'll just give you a rundown here. We've got that mini ITX. That's going to fit in this case really nicely, but uh, then we got to worry about fitting this GPU in. Uh, originally, I was actually going to just put it right in the PCIe slot, but the measurements on the website were about 7 millimeters off from real life, so I did have to kind of put this vertically with that riser cable. And of course, this A2000 does have a high profile bracket on it, and I would really never use the high profile bracket in another build, so I'm actually going to modify that bracket to make it fit. Moving on with the build, we're just going to go ahead and put this mini ITX board in. This little case fits this really nicely. And if you wanted to do an APU build with something like this, it would work out really well. You wouldn't have to do any kind of case modification to do an APU build. And it does support up to a 55 millimeter high cooler. I'm actually using a 53 millimeter cooler from Thermalrite known as the AXP 90 X53. One of my favorite little copper coolers. This case was really meant to use a 1U power supply, but if I used that space up, I wouldn't be able to fit the GPU. And going with a Pico power supply is definitely the way to go, but I've already got this 200 watt Inwin Chopin PSU, and we're actually going to put it right at the front of the case. This does have a couple mounting locations, so we can actually mount it in here pretty easily, and it's going to fit right up front very nicely. But then we got to worry about getting a power cable to the power supply. 
So I actually had some stuff laying around already. I figured I'd just go ahead and make one instead of buying one. And this power supply uses a type C5 power input, kind of like you'd see on a laptop power supply. It's a little three prong. And that end's gonna go to the power supply. And on the other end, I've got a C15 input like you'd see in a full size power supply. Now you can actually buy a cable like this on Amazon, but I've got so many cables laying around, I figured I'd just go ahead and make one. I did have to notch the case out a little bit, but it slides right down in here. So we've now got kind of external power input for that internal power supply. And again, I can't stress it enough, using a Pico power supply with an external power brick is gonna be so much easier. You'll only need to drill one hole for the 5.5 millimeter barrel jack from your external power supply to power up the internal Pico. But the way I've got it set up looks something like this, and really all that's left to do is add that RTX A2000. So initially, I was just going to cut this high profile bracket. Like I mentioned, I'm not going to use it in the future. I'll go with a low profile bracket when it comes in. But I found that bending both ends of it actually allows it to fit in this case really nicely with this riser cable that I have. And once it's all said and done, it actually sits in here and looks a little something like this. I think it actually turned out really nicely. And I've got that riser cable kind of mounted to the chassis itself from the bottom. So this card isn't going to go anywhere. And if we take a look around back, we've got access to all four mini display ports. So yeah, I mean, this kind of went together much nicer than I thought it was going to. While using the Dremel tool, it did slip a couple times. So we've got a few scratches on the back. But this is a painted case, so I could actually touch it up quite easily. And I really do like the look of this case. This is something I've had my eye on for a little while. I've used the K49 before, which is a much larger case, but uh, you know, for a little APU build or low profile with some modification, you can definitely make it work with the K29. And one thing I did was swap out that SSD for a Fury that I already had Windows on, so I didn't have to go through the installation, but let's go ahead and boot it up. Just got this power button on the front and I didn't lose one USB port on the front, but we still got USB-C up front and obviously all the ports on the motherboard are going to be accessible from the rear. They do send two different side panels. We've got this acrylic or we can go with the steel and I'm going to go with the steel side panel. It'll actually fit so the ventilation will go over the GPU or CPU and I might need to kind of swap it around to get some good temps, but let's go ahead and get into it. All right, so uh, I've done a little bit of testing so far not bad. I did limit the CPU TDP to 65 watts because we are using the X and we've only got 200 watts of power for this whole unit. By the end, we'll also take a look at total power consumption, but we've got those six cores, 12 threads, 16 gigabytes of DDR4, and I have overclocked this to 4,400 megahertz. And of course, the RTX A2000. So with this, we get six gigabytes of gddr 6 VRAM, and uh, it does perform really well. And you could leave this at the stock clocks or do some overclocking. And with around the 300 megahertz overclock, it outperforms that RTX 3050. But with all that out of the way, it's time to see how this thing can really handle gaming. And first up, we've got Spider-Man Miles Morales, 1080p, high settings, no DLSS. We're getting an average of around 68 FPS, but if you needed more out of it, obviously we've got DLSS that we can mess around with. Taking it to quality will net us around 79 FPS, and from there on, it's just going to go up. You could go down to performance, but at 1080p high with a system like this, you don't even need it. Now, before we test out some more games, I did want to show off a few benchmarks I ran. Just some GPU stuff using 3D Mark. Night Raid, 41,244. Fire Strike coming in with a strong 15,809. And finally, Time Spy with a 6,655. Given that we're working with a 4.1 liter PC, I think these scores are absolutely amazing. We've definitely got at least a 1080p gaming machine here, but with some games we can't even go up to 1440p, and I'll show those off in a second, but uh, the next one we're going to test out is Cyberpunk 2077. 1080p medium settings with DLSS set to quality. We get an average of 93 FPS out of this game, and to tell you the truth, at medium settings, we really don't even need DLSS. I just kind of wanted to see how high it would go. And to my eye, it really doesn't make much of a quality difference, so I don't mind using it just to get a little extra frame rate out of it. Next on the list, we've got God of War 1080p high settings, again, DLSS set to quality. And this is one of those that will get really close to under 60 FPS. It doesn't quite hit it, we're around 62 with no DLSS, but with it turned on, we get an average of 75 out of this game. 
here's Forza Horizon 5, and you can pretty much run this on any system. You just have to adjust those settings accordingly. But on this, we're at 1440p high, and we get an average of 82 FPS. Now, you can run this at 1080p Ultra if you want to. And by the way, we're not using any kind of AMD CAS or anything like that. Injustice 2, 1440p, very high settings, we're maxed out here. Another one I tested was Mortal Kombat 11, again, very high settings, 1440p, and Street Fighter 5. So when it comes to fighting games, not an issue whatsoever. You can run anything you want at 1440p with this system. And the final thing I wanted to test here was Call of Duty Modern Warfare 2. I like running the built-in benchmark. We're at 1080p, balanced preset, and I believe with the balanced preset, it does turn DLSS on and set it to quality. And with this, we got an average of 126 FPS and a low of 85. Needless to say, Modern Warfare 2 is fully playable on this system. So overall, I think the build came out really nicely. Now the maximum temperature that I saw while gaming was 86 degrees Celsius, and I believe that was with God of War. So it is getting on the warmer side, but we're not hitting thermal throttle with it while gaming. And maybe adding the acrylic cover would help out. It does have a little more ventilation. Or another thing that, you know, I probably should have added was a couple case fans just up top, at least one, pulling some air in or out. Really uh, need to do some experimentation with it. Or you could just take that steel cover and flip it around to the CPU side so it does draw that air right in over the cooler. But I think, you know, for a first run here with no extra case fans, not bad at all. Didn't hit thermal throttle under everyday normal use and gaming, so I'm totally fine with the way it's set up right now. And noise is very minimal with this system. I didn't go into the BIOS and adjust the fan curve. I could always do that to keep it a little cooler, but I think it's working out pretty decently. And total system power consumption is something that I was worried about. The Ryzen 5 5600X can draw significantly more power than the Ryzen 5 5600 non-X variant, and that's really why I kind of limited this to 65 watts. And the RTX A2000 kind of has a hard limit set at 70 watts, so it's not going to pull any more than that unless you do a BIOS mod or something. And while I was doing all of my testing, I had this plugged into a kilowatt meter at idle, 41 watts. While gaming, I did see it jump up to around 168 watts in some cases. And the maximum that I could get this to pull from the wall while maxing out the CPU and GPU at the same time was 189 watts. So we're getting kind of close to that 200 watt power supply limit. But under everyday normal use and gaming, we're good to go with the way it's set up right now. But if you end up doing a build like this, I would just go with like a 250 watt Pico or a 300 watt Pico power supply just to be on the safe side. But that's going to wrap it up for this video. Really appreciate you watching. This is something I've been wanting to do for a little while now that these uh, RTX A2000 prices, at least for used ones, are pretty decent. Coming in around $249, I was able to go ahead and do it. And this is an awesome little gaming machine. 1080p, basically everything. And keep in mind, we can also go up to 1440 and 4K with older stuff. If you're interested in putting a similar build together, I'll leave links for everything I used in the description. And I'd also like to know your thoughts in the comments below. I mean, what did you think about the performance coming out of this small form factor PC? Remember, what we were testing in this video, all the performance we saw and power was coming out of a 4.1 liter mini PC. If you have any questions, let me know down below. And like always, thanks for watching.